Yo, what is going on everybody? It is your boy Potential Unleashed. We are back with another chapter review. This is One Piece chapter 1091. It is titled Sent Tomorrow. I'm really excited about this chapter. Although we're going to get a break next week, it's all good. That's because of different things that are going on in the One Piece community, especially tomorrow with the One Piece live action dropping. I am really excited. And this was a really good chapter to be a teaser for what we're about to experience with the live action. But if you guys enjoy regular anime content, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out a new video. With that away, my name is Potential Unleashed and let's get into the review. The chapter, it starts off with the other Marines acknowledging the fact that Kazaru had made contact and that he is fighting Sentomaru and he's inside the dome. So the other Marines, which includes the different Vice Admirals, are trying their best to fight off the pacifistas. There's the weaponized sea beasts that are attacking and we see different Marines going and attacking and just fighting all together and then we get another panel showcasing the pecking order of the pacifists and who controls them it's similar to the seraphims with the five elders at the top there is Vegapunk and the Stellas, then there's Centimaru, and then whoever is holding the chip. They are the ones who controls the pacifists and the Seraphim, which will play an important factor later on in this chapter. I understand why Vegapunk encouraged Centimaru to flee, because this is a battle that he can't win. As we all know, he got destroyed by Rob Lucci, and Rob Lucci is nowhere near on the level of Kazara. I think it's really interesting why he stilled his resolve to stay because they are fighting back and forth i do want to mention a little bit of how i love the way that oda draws kazara using his fruit i think it's really unique and he does a marvelous job highlighting it there was a panel of Sentomaru cutting him in half and he kind of split himself it reminds me a lot of Danny Phantom he kind of looks like a ghost that's hovering above him when you see the different particles of light that are separating I thought that panel was really dope but the reason why Sentomaru is fighting against Admiral Kazaru is because he claimed that he owes his life to the man and he doesn't want anything to happen to him he doesn't want Vegapunk to be killed and he's going to try his best to hold him off long enough for him to escape. We also got Sentomaru's flashback. It was really quick, nothing really special about it in my opinion, but it's something that's a nice touch. We see that Kizaru and Vegapunk, that they are together. They were supposed to be in charge of taking out these boars or bears. I forget which one that they are, but Sentomaru was the one who ended up defeating him. And Sentomaru says, hey, give me a job and uh, Vegapunk offers him the job of being the bodyguard and that's how their relationship is a thing. I find it pretty interesting that Sentomaru asked Kizaru to teach him how to protect Vegapunk because this showcase, we know that Sentomaru has the world's toughest defense as he likes to self-proclaim and that's just him using advanced armament and I find it interesting because Kizaru was the one to teach him that and so the student is getting destroyed or going to try to go against his master and he's going to end up being defeated which is fitting because as they are fighting Kazaru he said hey my guard isn't something to sneeze at you know and then he attacks and tomorrow he is now unconscious and Kazaru now has the chip and he is ordering the pacifista to take on the weaponized sea beast so that way they can have a better shot at eliminating Vegapunk and the tide or at least the people that are fighting on the straw hat side is starting to shift more and more into the Navy's hand. Now I understand that St. Garcia Satter wants to remain hidden and he doesn't want different individuals to know that he is here but at the same time if he were to go and out himself saying that he is here since the five elders have the highest authority when it comes to the pacifista and the seraphim if you were to get them because i know that they are um in the bubble and so i understand that but having them on their side would be tremendous for the marines i don't know why he doesn't do that but maybe we'll find out later as egghead island unfolds so the straw hats at least luffy side and usopp and nami they're well Luffy and Nami are freaking out because Sinamaru is unconscious and Luffy, he is preparing the ship in order for them to escape. I also find it interesting, and I said this in my last review, how um, York, she's like, hey, I'm Vegapunk, you guys can't hack my system. And I'm like, well, I mean, they're Vegapunk too, and there's more of them. So they do have or should have an e 
equal opportunity in order to break that pass where i think she's very naive in that aspect thing that they can't break out but whatever this part of the chapter irritated me a little bit not because of the action but because the i believe the straw hats were really naive in this and obviously this is just an oda thing and how he narratively wanted to go whatever fine but as they are trying to break into the password that york has set rob lucci he makes an attack and tries to eliminate vegapunk where stussy reacts and she gets hit by a finger pistol which i understand that she's a cp agent but there's different individuals like zoro and sanji that are here i don't know why they didn't react equally as fast as stussy did and stepped in or she i didn't think she really needed to get attacked here because they're there but whatever like i said that's a narrative choice the thing that irritates me is that zoro already knew when him and luffy free Kaku and Luchi that he couldn't trust them and that they were going to try and eliminate Vegapunk and the Straw Hats and so the fact that after whatever happened with the Seraphim that they just allowed Rob Luchi to roam free I don't really understand why but hey I guess it's just to set up the fight that he's going to happen or face in the next couple chapters. I know I hated on them for how slow they reacted when Luchi tried to kill Vegapunk, but I will commend Zoro and Sanji what they did afterwards. Sanji, he took the bubble gun from Nami and trapped Kaku in one. He is a Devil Fruit user. And so this allows Luchi not to get any backup. And then there is Zoro who went and tried to attack Luchi and he blocked it with his foot. And I love Zoro's line here. He said, oh, it finally took you to have backup to grow a spine he's like you weren't trying to fight us when you know we were ready and prepared but now that you know you got back you can puff your chest out a little bit basically calling him a front runner low key and so as they are clashing Zoro he ends up pushing him out of the room and it looks like they're about to fight we cut to Kizaru and apparently Luffy has stopped and he's not traveling with the others and Kazaru looks and all of a sudden Luffy ends up rushing at him well you don't see the rush but he was so fast that he sent him a kick and Kazaru blocked it he used hockey this reminds me of if you want to talk about a panel I know it's not one-to-one -one, but when Luffy ended up kicking Kaido in the face when he unlocked advanced conquerors and then this scene of him like just coming out of nowhere and attacking someone reminds me a lot of whenever he kicked Hody Jones in Fishman Island. This statement from Luffy after he kicked him, he said we're a hundred times stronger than we were two years ago because I was talking about at Sabayoti how they're stronger than when they faced the first time and also this is a reference to when Shaki claimed that Rayleigh was 100 times stronger than a different supernova i find that a good touch talking about the matchups i'm not necessarily mad with what's going on here i plan on doing a video now that i've read this chapter going a little bit more in depth about Kazaru and about luffy and why they are fighting i don't think that they're going to go all out that's just me personally i was expecting it to be saint garcia's saturn but he's not here so it only makes sense that this is the person luffy's fighting and i'm not mad at that i can't wait to see them go all out i am a little bit not disappointed that zoro's fighting luchi i think luchi is strong especially his awakening he was boxing with gear fifth luffy but i really wanted to see i feel like in terms of a matchup, Sanji versus Luchi, just because uh, Sanji using kicks and Luchi using the Ryoshiki or Rokoshiki techniques, I forgot you pronounce that, but I think that would have been more interesting than Zoro versus him. But I don't think it's a bad matchup. I don't think that Zoro is completely out of Luchi's range. I think that they're kind of relative to each other. And Zoro also fights the second strongest, and right now, Luchi is the second strongest that is in Egghead Island. Will the matchup shift? I don't know. Very well could be. And at the same time, they very well could go all out right here and there. Like I said, I don't believe that's going to happen, but it is a possibility. We're getting a break next week, which sucks. I'm not going to lie. I was not expecting us to have another break, but Oda deserves it with all the things happening with the manga, with the live action, with the anime. He deserves his break. And so unfortunately, we're getting one. But hey, after this one, we'll get three straight chapters, I believe, for the rest of the year. But let me know how you guys felt about this chapter in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out on a new video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok is on the screen in the description below. Thank you guys so much, so much for watching. And don't forget to unleash your potential.